Good morning. Welcome to the celebration of the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord. Um, I recommend that you read all the wonderful things that are happening, uh, not only in the church, but the school through the bulletin extension. I'd like to bring your attention to one of the announcements, and it's on the front. Uh, on the back window seals, you'll find personal and professional information on the four candidates for the position of principal. And they're on those window seals and that window seal. Um, there will be a special voters meeting on Tuesday, February 6th at 7 p.m. Uh, to call one of these candidates. Please mark your calendars to attend this important event. So again, the <clears throat> personal and professional uh, basic information is there so we can uh, call our next principal. Um, you see that our sanctuary is being worked on. You can kind of smell it too. Um, but we have our uh, sanctuary improvement working and we get to see the work being completed and done. Also a simple reminder, we have our um, baby bottles for the Mosaic Pregnancy Center. They're still collecting. I think they're in tubs at both um, exits. We will follow the divine service as it is laid out for us in the divine service setting two and let us begin with our opening hymn. Let us stand. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we can... Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are against you and against you. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and are unable to keep the
Dear beloved, I have good news. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know we live in the midst of so many dangers that in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Grant strength and protection to support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday after Epiphany is from Deuteronomy chapter 18. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you. From your brothers, it is to him you shall listen, just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God or see his great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them and all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence, and that there is no God but one. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things, and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we exist." However, not all possess this knowledge, but some, through former association with idols, eat food as really offered to an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged if his conscience is weak, to eat food offered to idols? And so by your knowledge this weak person is destroyed, the brother for whom Christ died, thus sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. They went into Capernaum, And immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commanded even the unclean spirits, and they obeyed him. And at once his fame spread everywhere, throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated.
Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, bless us and keep us as your word comes to keep us, hold us, and bless us in the great and wondrous works that have been completed for us in Christ our Lord. To this end, use the words that flow from these lips to proclaim your great mercy in Christ Jesus. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have come once again to Sunday. And in the midst of Sunday, we come to church. We come to the divine service. We come to be amongst our brothers and sisters. And during this time of the service, we come to hear yet another sermon. And it is in this that we get to hear the gospel preached and proclaimed. We see in the gospel lesson that our Lord shows up at the synagogue and immediately begins teaching. And we hear that the people are astonished. They are astonished that they're hearing something. They're astonished that the teaching that is being given and delivered is with authority. It is not just another sermon. It is not just another pep talk. It is not another object lesson. It is not another uh, application to life. This is the word of God coming and dwelling amongst the people. And we hear in the gospel lesson that they are surprised. What is this? He speaks with, as one with authority. And this is kind of unfair to all the people that preached before Jesus. For when Jesus shows up, of course he's going to speak with authority. It is his word, it is his work that he is giving and delivering and pointing to. But yet you see that these people are starved to hear what God has promised, let alone what he has promised to fulfill. And then on top of that, to have the very fulfillment of that word and that promise given to them before them. And I don't think they were quite there yet. I don't think they made all the connections that the Son of God, Christ Jesus, the promised one is there. They just see that this is something incredibly different than everything that they have heard before. Now, let's pause here for just a moment. What was given and delivered before Jesus was by no means bad. Was it even wrong? The idea was that the priest, the scribe, got up and talked and delivered the law, delivered what was given, delivered what was told to be given. And now we have Jesus showing and giving himself and so we get to see this difference. And we get to see that these people are longing for this very difference. And in the midst of this teaching and this astonishing work in the hearing of the people, a demon-possessed man shows up. And we have the, the wonderful picture on our bulletin cover. You see Christ and you see the, the demon-possessed man. And what I find interesting, and, and now the Gospel of St. Mark is short, and very concise. But what I think is really interesting is you have Jesus preaching and proclaiming, you have the people looking with awe and hearing, and a demon-possessed man walks in, and nobody blinks an eye. Nobody runs. Nobody tries to hide and shield their children or their wives or their families. This man just shows up. And I think this is phenomenal. And he speaks, and, and we hear that he actually starts uh, shouting at our Lord, have, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. These are huge statements. For we have the demon making the connection that the people are astonished with. We have the people again listening. Who is this? What is he? This is amazing. And then we have the demon telling the people who he is. You are the Holy One of God, Jesus of Nazareth. It really is as if the demon is telling everybody, hey, 
all that stuff in the Old Testament that you've been waiting for, he's here and he's coming to destroy. He's coming in his judgment. Run! And we hear that Jesus comes and he rebukes, saying, be silent and come out of him. And again, the statement of be silent. And we hear the command of our Lord upon this demon. We have the demon making this confession. Why would he not let him go further? Why would he not let him explain to the congregation exactly who he is? We know that the demon has no saving faith. We know the demon is fearful of what he is and who stands before him. And we hear that Jesus exercises what he is, the Lord of life, the one who has come, the one who has promised to rescue. And he does that very act. He rescues this man from the demon. And he calls and commands this demon, come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying out, comes out. Well, what's again, is amazing is you have Jesus preaching and it's, this is my word coming to you, but, but it's just not me talking at you. Watch this. I will show you how this word works. I will exercise it as I exercise this demon. And so not only is the word preached, but in the hearing and in the sight of these people, they see God at work. They see the power. And we hear the people, is this a new teaching? Even the unclean spirits listen to him. The, this is a grand event. And, and we see this at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry. And we hear that his fame goes out through all of the region of Galilee. But these are all just neat things. These people are amazed. They have not seen the power and might of God at work delivering and completing all that has been given to them. And of course the fame goes forth. Of course they're excited because they saw something new. They saw something neat. And this brings us to us today. This very divine service we have the miracles and might of God at work. But how often do we come to sit in our pew with our friends, with our people, and we hear another sermon. We say the same words in the liturgy, and this just becomes routine. This just becomes the things we do on Sunday. We fulfill our obligation. But yet today, here, you saw and heard God show up right there in the words of absolution. You heard your sins are forgiven. And again, this is not just God speaking. This isn't just magical words. This isn't just the thing that is said to make you feel better so you do not feel the guilt and the hurt and pain of what and who we are. This isn't the picking up and saying, oh, everything's okay, go back to your life. No, this is God coming and saying, I know who you are. You are the sinners of this world. You are the fallen. You are the dead. And I come to you to rescue you from the depths of your sin, from the depths of your death. I come and make you alive. Because I speak to you. I bestow upon you my life. And right there, you were spoken alive. You were spoken to in the love and the pity of God. And this isn't, oh, that's so sad. But this is, here, let me make you mine. Let me work and provide what you cannot do. Let me give you life forevermore. And it is in this divine service that we get to have, we get to thirst for this great and grand gift of God's work to and for us so that we don't look at this as another thing we do, another sermon, another 
him, another service that we have to stand and sit, stand and sit, stand and sit. But this is the reaction response, the life of who and what we are. God's redeemed, God's children. We are the lambs of his flock carried and provided for. Let us have our ears opened, for this is what has been given to us in baptism. This is what the divine comes to do, to serve you. Let us see ourselves in the midst of this gospel lesson. Let us be amazed that God speaks to the likes of us. Every and each time we come to gather his word, around his word, let us pray that we do hear and do have these great and grand and wondrous gifts for our life, not just here, but for the life that has promised and but deliv- has been delivered to us forevermore. This is yours in the faith created and sustained by God. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. We stand for the Confession of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Let us pray together for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, your servant Moses promised that you would raise up a prophet like him from among your ancient people, putting your words in his mouth. We bless your name that you have fulfilled that promise when you sent your Son with the words of eternal life for us to hear and to treasure. Make all ministers of your church faithful in preaching that word, and grant all your people grace to hear and welcome it with joy. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you are our hiding place. You preserve your children from trouble and surround them with shouts of deliverance. Receive our thanks for all the faithful departed who have gone before us and now rest in Christ. Bring us with all your saints to the joys of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the offering.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.